on. No, oh, well, thank, yeah, thanks. <laughs> and, and, and my question is, uh, it's, it's, it's similar to what the person was saying earlier about coming into a situation such as such as a court and exalting this administrator position. I as a, not as an executor. You, you've already plainly stated that it's best to come as an administrator, not a grantor or or or, or a director, but as an administrator. Well, I, I, I don't mind director, and uh, the, the, being the grantor is what gives you the ability to then become the administrator. So I, I didn't say it's not good to be the grantor, but the grantor is irrelevant, except for appointing the, the, the executor or the administrator, if you want to call it that. So, but, but I'll let you go ahead now. Okay. And what, what I'm saying is, is that at any point, at any time during the procedure, uh, although you may have not done the administrator, because I'm, I'm assuming you're... you're you're relying upon the Administrative Procedure Act of 1946, am I correct? Nope, nope. I'm relying on uh, on the laws of equity that are non-statutory, and it just just plain administrative law. If it's an act, it doesn't apply. Oh, okay, but whether whether these administrative laws come from that you are speaking about? Uh, they're they're the same thing as uh, basically almost like the laws of equity. I mean, you you can get a law book on administrative law, and really a lot of it's uh, more so. Uh, I mean, where, where does criminal law come from? It, just, it comes from centuries of case law, right? Administrative right, right. law is, is just uh, the, the, the privileges and the abilities of who the administrator is and what they can do. So it, that's not really something that's been legislated. That's almost like uh, you can go through, through hundreds and hundreds of years of case law on administrative law. Right, right. I, I'm, not, I'm not disputing what you're saying. I'm just yep. trying to give a re- reference point for myself and, and those who are listening a reference point where they can they can have a have a foundation yep. they can reach back. That's why I mentioned 1946. That's oh, yeah, there's an administrative law act. I mean, feel free to look it up and use it because you got to remember, government is bound by their own statutes. So if you can use one of their own statutes against them, you, you couldn't get anything better. That's like a Christmas gift with a bow on it. <laughs> Very good. So so now real real quick, uh, basically I'm saying that at any point in, 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 in any stage of the proceedings, as is criminal, as is civil. I mean, if it's criminal or if it's, if it's excuse me, because I'm kind of hoarse, if it's civil or if it's or if it's criminal, could one walk into the courtroom after doing an administrative process or before administrative process and exalt this position as administrator and, and kind of shake things up if nothing else? Oh, for sure. And you shouldn't even be walking into court at all unless you've uh, unless you've already basically defaulted them administratively. And got them and and, go, and have agreement with them administratively before you even walk in there. I've did about three, four times already. I'm just saying in general for the Perfect. public. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you got it then. Well, thank you very much. Thank you again, Angela. I appreciate it. Wow, Good night. Thank you. Good night. Okay, let's see who's next. Steam shovel. Okay, steam shovel. Yeah. Hi. Shovel in it. No. Hi. Hi, Angela. Um, Hi. Yeah, it's been a while. I've kind of got this slipped my mind a little bit, but um, I've been studying with Gene Keating, and as far as uh, helping everybody out with foreclosures, he says that most of the lenders or most of the mortgage companies fail to put the mortgage trust deed and the deed or the uh, promissory note in a REMIC trust within the 90 days or pay the bond for the taxes for the transfer. That's one big, big point, and it's worth learning. The other thing is, today I went with the friend to court, and we looked at his file. I said, hey, you got to look at your file. you got to see if there's things in there that maybe you, know, you don't know about. We went in there. We found a military status affidavit that the lender's using, even though they don't have the note, they don't have all the things you ask for, there's some type of military thing going on. I talked to Chris Summers about that. We need to look into that more also. There's yeah, some... yeah, you may want to ask them what that's all about. Yeah, and we asked them to copy the files, and we got them all copied, and we left. And then when we got home, we looked, and that military status affidavit wasn't even in there. Nice. So we're going to go back there tomorrow with another witness, because myself was with my friend, and I'm witnessing, but... Um, we're going to get a camera and Did take you pictures see this of it. Yourself? I saw it myself, yeah. Okay. And uh, get a camera and get, and get another person to witness it also 
and just, I mean, he paid 20 bucks to make copies of everything. And, you know, we left with all the copies. We're like, oh, boy, we got it, you know. And then we get home that wasn't even in there. So they're, like, conspiring to not provide the whole file also. Yeah, I, I'd say it's within the realm of possibility that it, it got, that the, it just didn't get photocopied. Mm-hmm. It's with, I, I would say, I wouldn't jump to the whole conspiracy to pervert the course of justice yet, but if you go back there and mm-hmm. they won't give it to you or it's not in the file or, or they refuse to photocopy it for you, uh, if it happens a second time, I think that pretty much eliminates the chance. Right. That's why we're going to do it again tomorrow. Yeah. But it would be interesting. I, I don't even know what the hell bearing that would have on a case uh, to whatever that document that could have been. It'd be interesting to find out, though. I'd like to hear about it. Yeah. Um, as as far as uh, other than that, I want to mention that I went on the private side with plates. I'm a contractor too, and heck, I drove around for like three years with expired tags. I mean, you know, I'm I'm mowing lawns and doing everything I was doing when I was about 14 to make money nowadays. But um, you know, there's no economy. We're I I tell everybody we're becoming the United States. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. No, you're not becoming. You you were you've been there for a while. Right. So anyhow, I've been going for a year now since like July 12th, 2010. I've driven on private plates on the county. And I just notified the county uh, sheriff, the commissioner of the high patrol for the state and my local police. And I've been followed numerous times and nobody pulls me over. Usually I'll just put my blinker on and move over a lane and they'll go by or the next stoplight you go to, they'll make a right and you can keep going straight. They don't. I think they figure, hey, there's a guy that learned how to take his diapers off. Yeah, if they've got that in the computer, uh, probably. Uh, and if, uh, say if you're in a major city, you probably wouldn't get uh, treated like that. But uh, if you're out in a smaller county area, you find the local local people that uh, that have to live with everyone else in the area. The cops are probably a lot, a lot easier on people like you. Yeah, I, I've driven as far as like 100 to 150 miles away and haven't been hassled. In fact, one time I was like going by and I saw two motorcycle cops off their motorcycles standing near the road. I don't, they may have had radar guns in their hands or something, but standing on the road and look at it and see, you know, my plates and everything. They're pretty, they're pretty colorful. I'd say I have the the banner of peace on the left side, and then I have the one law oppress no one flag on the right, and it just says California Republic, and it says. You know, well, there's, there, there's no question it's lawful, so it all depends on whether or not someone's going to mess with you one day and you're going to have to go to court and defend it. Right, and I'll just take it easy, play it, you know, don't don't create a confrontation and do whatever I have to do. But I just wanted to give other people confidence that, yeah, it's it kind of is awkward for the first year or so, but after a while you just like, you feel good about it, you're, you get in the groove and you don't really worry about it anymore. Yep, yeah, uh, everyone's nervous to do it at first. Mm-hmm. And I'll probably write a story about it and like, you know, just go ahead and do it, folks. Get on the private side. Don't don't freak out. Don't worry about being on the public. We've been brainwashed for too long. Take your diapers off. Yep. Couldn't agree more with that. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Dean. And uh, we'll keep in touch. Absolutely. Yeah. Let, let everybody know what happens with that mortgage. Yeah. I'll I'll talk to Angela. I'll email her and tell her and let her share it with the other people. Okay, great. Okay, thank you, Angel. Bye. Thank you. Okay, let's see here. Oh, boy. Um, Canium. Canium? Canium? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, Angela. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, go right ahead. Thank you. Um, you're really a breath of fresh air. We thought we'd heard everything, but... Um, you've really helped fill in a whole bunch of holes. Um, I really appreciate it, in particular your comment about taking on the Vatican and their claim to the world, and also helping, um, oh, and also you're acknowledging the meets and bounds because we've been doing that on the Republic um, and for our free state, for the state and the county. And I also like your infinity interest rate. And isn't that really, um, it's a felon, I think, in some states I read online. Oh, that, that's, a, that's a huge crime. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's called a criminal interest rate. And yeah, that, yeah of course it's a crime. That, that, so is, I, that is a felony down in the states. So um, 
to get what I'm calling about tonight, and I'm so glad I might get cut off because my phone was supposed to be cut off at midnight, and I got dropped twice, so either I might get dropped or cut off. So um, I'll cut to the chase, and um, I pretty much kept out of the IRS just by really feeling innocently that it just doesn't feel right, and I don't want to participate, and that's worked. But I have backed myself into a corner um, with taking on a hard money lender, and I want to get rid of my property taxes. I only have 28 days to deal with a notice of forfeiture of a real estate contract that I got just two days ago. And um, so I'm wondering if having the hard money lender in there changes anything that you've said um, before on this call, and I look forward to getting on and listening over and over again, like Angela, to the and like I love to do on everything, um, your other material. So I'll do that. But is there anything that you, you know, given that I have 28 days and um, this other party, the hard money lender, um, has an LC. I don't know if that affects the whole situation, um, but I have taxes, and it's only three thousand in taxes and three thousand in the rears on my payments, and um, he's coming after a hundred and thirty in equity that I have, a hundred and forty in equity that I have um, for that little money. Well, um, twenty-eight days. Uh... It's pretty. It's, it's it's almost the same answer we've talked about here with a few other people. Is number one, uh, you should be contacting the, whoever the lender is, and and demanding some verified proof of of their claim. Produce the. Note. So I, I did that, Dean, um, okay. a while back. I didn't give because I was trying to buy some time. Yep. Um, for a couple of reasons, but they never responded. He said, and I have the email validating that he was going to respond. He never did. So. I am going to do um, an asset, you know, um, get it re-notarized and probably add a few things. Um, I can probably, and then do a counterclaim, I can probably buy some time because he's done some illegal things. He contacted uh, a trustee of a trust that I have, and all the letters from the lawyer have been just totally wacko. Uh, all the figures are incomplete. They left out five payments I made in okay. the last. Have they taken you to court at all? No, it's just a notice. It's all so it's far. all just administrative. See, everything they're doing right now against you is all administrative, and right. they're just ignoring anything. So you're not going to get a counterclaim together. You're going to get an actual statement of claim together where you're going to be the plaintiff in court. And if you do oh, that so. and you make application for a pending litigation order and you send that down to the county, they cannot foreclose, they cannot sell your home in tax sale, especially if you add the county to your lawsuit or a separate lawsuit. They can't do anything because it's pending litigation. And then you sue yeah. these bastards and you bring in your administrative process into the court to have it recognized through your affidavit with the supporting uh, exhibits in your statement of claim. And if, if, if you've done everything properly and you're going to do everything properly down from now on too, then your statement of claim will stand. The bank cannot issue, they cannot go in and file a statement of defense against your statement of claim because they can't produce the note. So you're going to win. Okay, now the part that concerns me because I've been listening to a lot of stuff, but when it comes to paperwork and going to court, I do have one person that um, uh, here in Southeast Iowa that said he'd help me. But how can I, and he's been... He knows law so well that in Washington State, a judge there allowed him to practice law years ago. And so he's going to help me without any charge because he comes to our meetings, our assemblies here once in a while. And um, he has a court, court, uh, he has a case at the Supreme Court right now that's going to be very significant for the country. Um, but anyhow, so how can I be sure that I'm going to do it right? And I have like well, if, if, if this guy's yeah. got experience with getting statement of, statements of claim together, a, a statement okay. of claim like an actual lawsuit, that's great. You're going to file uh -huh. it on your own, and as long as you've got the affidavit and the supporting documents, and you file it into the court, you, you, you can't lose. 
Because yeah, you got to remember, a, a bank can't swear out an affidavit. A bank can't even file a statement of claim. The only thing they can do is produce the actual note that you've been asked. 